Hey everyone, we had some massive news coming out of Nicola and management talked about some of their big, big, big picture items that Nicola stock investors are not going to want to miss. So in this video, I'm going to review that massive news that came out from Nicola and explain what I think it could mean for Nicola stock investors. So let's jump right in. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. Starting with the new CEO, Steven Gursky, talking about the company's plan for the two powertrain options, right? So one truck, two powertrain options, working towards developing that zero emissions fueling and charging solutions for class eight trucking. The two truck options that they have complement each other, offering different range, weight, and infrastructure solutions, allowing them to better serve customers, right? Because each trucking customer has specific needs. And so by having a couple of options, you're more likely to fit one of those needs from their customers. So where are they going? First, they're going to California, right? California is the state on the cutting edge of technology. In other words, what this means is California is the one that's most aggressively pushing trucking operators towards the zero emissions technology. California is the one with the strictest regulations, the strictest rules, trying to get the conversion over as quickly as possible. And so that's where Nicola is focusing on. And I think that's a smart move because without those government incentives and without the government forcing trucking operators to switch over, the demand for zero emission trucking vehicles would be would be minuscule. It wouldn't be worth going after, right? The only reason the market is worth going after is because governments are forcing trucking operators to switch over to these new technologies. Now, beginning in 2024, all new trucks registered with the California Air Resources Board for port and drayage operations must be zero emissions must be zero emissions so california is offering numerous incentives as well up to a two hundred eighty eight thousand dollar incentive or up to a four hundred and eight thousand dollar incentive for the hydrogen fuel cell electric purchase so the government here in california is really trying to push the transition over to zero emissions vehicles and they're doing it with the carrot and the stick right telling folks that hey we'll give you a couple of hundred thousand dollars to switch over but if not you're going to be forced to switch over anyways and this just highlights my point that organically truckers do not want to most truckers do not want to switch over this is a major inconvenience from their existing operations to have to change what they've been doing to this new technology that's not really ready yet doesn't have the charging infrastructure in place to make sure that this transition will be smooth and unsurprisingly truckers have been against this right let me show you the california trucking group has been challenging the state's zero emissions rule right they don't want this new rule they don't like it they're not in favor of it and so they're pushing back they're lobbying against it and i wouldn't be surprised if some of these rules get changed they get delayed they get pushed out they get diluted and to make it a little bit easier for these truckers to transition over because the reality on the floor is that the market is not yet ready to absorb this transition the technology is not there yet it's not ready yet and so one thing that Nicola plans to capitalize on is being the first mover. They believe they are the first OEM in the market with a hydrogen fuel cell electric truck. And while this would be an advantage if there was strong demand for this technology in the market, the reality is that the demand there is not strong. Even with these incentives, it still will cost more to switch over to transition to this type of truck from an existing if you've already got a diesel truck and so the transition has been slow and it hasn't allowed nicola to really benefit from being the first mover if anything if anything i would say nicola is suffering by being the first mover by rushing to market with its technology it delivered a product that was not yet ready and you could see all of the recalls right the battery electric version of its truck is in recall 
I wouldn't be surprised if there's continuous troubles, continuous recalls from the hydrogen fuel cell truck because it seems like they've rushed the product to market before it was ready and now they're facing those recalls. So I mentioned already that the infrastructure is not yet in place to be ready to absorb this increase in uh, transition to zero emission vehicles. Uh, so Nikola addressing that saying that they're in the process of establishing fueling solutions for their customers in Northern and Southern California. And in a tough macro environment, working with partners is critical to ensure there's adequate capital to complete these projects. And one note of good news for Nicola has been they've received millions of dollars in grants, in grants from the California government, from federal government to build out some of these fueling stations, these charging stations. And so that's just great news for the company because that's free money, free money for them to build out these charging solutions for their customers. And in that way, it will enhance consumers, its trucking partners to purchase some vehicles if they notice that the infrastructure is in place that the refueling recharging will not be at risk of facing delays and causing their operations to slow down because they're not able to charge in time or refuel in time and it's all really uncertain and it's a big question mark and customers truckers are not yet confident in this new technology Understandably so, because the, the infrastructure hasn't been built out yet. It's been rushed. It's been forced, right? The government is really trying to force it down people's throats and saying, you've got to do it. You have to. We're making you. We don't care if you don't want to. We don't care if it disrupts your operations. We don't care if it costs more money. We're forcing you to do it because we think it's better for people. We think this is what needs to happen. And so... That's where the dilemma is. Nic Nicola is trying to capitalize on this government shift and customers, truckers are pushing back against it, lobbying against it and saying, all right, we'll push back as long as we can. We'll hold off on buying new trucks. We'll slow down our operations. We won't grow. We won't invest. We'll just keep our money. We'll get out of the business instead of doing these new things because these new things will make it so it's not worth it for us to be in business, right? You're making us pay all this extra money when we're not making that much money to justify spending all this extra money. We're going to go out of business. And so we'd rather just go out of business instead of buying this new truck, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for this new truck. Instead, when it comes time, I'll maybe switch to another career or do something different rather than investing in new trucks. Or I'll keep pushing back and hoping that the government extends the deadline, changes the deadline, changes the rules, and makes it easier for me to transition or offers even more incentives that will lower the cost for me to switch. In addition to California, Nicola is seeing considerable momentum in the northeastern states like New York for an incentive of up to 185000 and New Jersey for up to 175000 And really, this is what's, what it's going to take, hundreds of thousands of dollars of incentives to try and get truckers to switch over from diesel to this new technology because they just don't want it, right? If people wanted it, if truckers wanted it, you wouldn't need to entice them with a $200,000 incentive to purchase one of these zero emissions trucks. And so Nicola saying that they continue to build sales momentum for both trucks, recently receiving orders of 47 BEVs from one dealer, and there are 277 non-binding fuel cell electric truck contracts. So 47 is a rather small number, right? When you consider that there's hundreds of thousands of dollars of incentives out there to get 47 orders, not incredible, but good, right? You want to make progress. And then the 277, these are non-binding contracts, so the customers can cancel at any time. Right now, they've just probably showed tentative interest in these trucks. So if someone orders a hydrogen fuel cell truck today, they will not likely receive the truck until late Q2 2024. This is the company's way of trying to tell you that they've got a backlog of customer demand that people are on the waiting list to try and get these trucks. Although 
I will take that with a grain of salt because that doesn't necessarily mean that there is strong demand for the company's trucks. It just means that they're choosing to constrain supply because they understand that customer demand is weak. So they're not really increasing manufacturing capacity. They're already said that they're doing the build to order model, which I think is prudent, right? They're not gonna make the truck until a customer orders and buys it and pays for it. Then they'll go ahead and make the truck. They're not gonna make these trucks anymore and see them get stuck in inventory, just like they have with the battery electric truck. They have a lot, they have millions of dollars worth of the battery electric truck in inventory, and they're having a hard time getting rid of those trucks. And so now with this new technology, they're saying, we're gonna, we're gonna switch over to this new strategy, perhaps with the incoming CEO as well, making that decision saying we're not going to make them anymore until there's someone to buy them so that we don't risk the chance that they'll get stuck in our inventory which is critical for nicola because they have a significant cash shortage they continuously keep going back to investors and telling investors to give them millions and hundreds of millions of dollars so that they can continue operating the business because they just keep losing more and more and more money and without investor support this company would have gone bankrupt a while ago already if investors stopped giving them money. But investors continue to be willing to buy their stock, which I would not recommend. I would not recommend buying their stock. I think they're too speculative. I think they haven't proven enough. I think they need to demonstrate that they can execute and deliver products effectively and efficiently without losing so much money, without facing so many challenges, without having recalls and other problems. They need to just deliver solid performance for some time at least, for some time before I would be willing to recommend the stock or be interested in buying the stock. There's just not enough proof that this company can operate the business sustainably. Okay, but before I let you go, if you've gained any value from this video, which you probably have if you made it this far, let's be honest, please subscribe to the channel. It'll really help me make more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching.